And we're back at the Mobility Project. And tonight we're going to talk about, uh, take on a request from some viewers talking about, can you talk about SI joint pain, Kelly? And, uh, or pain in the SI region. One of the things that we want people to get move away from is trying to self-diagnose the tissues that are affected and possibly kind of move towards a, an idea of saying, hey, I have pain in this region. And pain in this region typically is referring to pain in the SI region where people say they have sacroiliac joint dysfunction. And what they're specifically talking about is the kind of relationship with the flat sacrum to the pelvic bones on either side, the inanimate bones, the, the kind of pelvic bull bones. If you think about the sacrum coming down, it creates a gigantic wedge between these two uh, big, large pelvis bones, and it transmits 100% of the energy from the axial skeleton um, down and from the peripheral skeleton up. And so it's easy to imagine that you can get a little jam or have a little rotation or you know, strain one of those little sacral uh, ligaments and end up with some dysfunction. A couple words is that most of the time when I see SI dysfunction in my athletes, it kind of corresponds with some typical patterning. It's obvious, it's easy of course if you get into a bad position you end up with a rotation at the pelvis when you're feeling literally look in the mirror and you see one carrying angle is short or one kind of hip angle here is short then uh, you know something's on or if you kind of palpate the front bones of your hips and see that you're rotated a little bit funny, one is rotated, what you need to do is go get some help. And there's some rotation, counter-rotation things to do, maybe we'll cover that another, another time. But in the meantime, specifically, what is it you can do or how to understand this? And the number one way that I kind of start to think about it is uh, the, we see that when, when we're kind of working in athletic positions and extending, what's happening is we're creating what's called a nutation position, which is the sacrum is going into uh, kind of this forward motion and it locks against the pelvis. And that kind of forward flexing motion of the sacrum is called nutation. And one of the things that makes a big difference is restoring motion to kind of that jammed position. And this is why Louis Simmons of Westside has, you know, has a lot of really good success. And a lot of those guys with the reverse hyper, it's about restoring spinal motion, specifically restoring kind of this individual spinal motion to the, to the pelvis. One of the things that happens is really useful is that we see very little lumbar disease in third world countries. We've talked about this extensively. And in squatting, one of the things that happens in a free squat where my legs aren't blocked is it allows for this global flexion and then the sacrum actually drops in the other direction or in the same direction as the pelvis essentially unlocking it. And one of the reasons it's important and it's different that even if I squat down and sit on a box, I limit this and I once again have this fulcruming action where I'm overextending. We really need to make sure that our kind of architecture is organized, we're neutral pelvis. And when we talk about neutral pelvis, we're saying, hey, this is the loaded spine position. If you're ever unclear about this, go ahead and set up a a uh, big heavy yoke and put 500 pounds on it and stand up and see what position your spine goes into and chances are you're going to feel for the first time what it's like to have your abs on and to be in what we call a neutral spine. The pelvis is a neutral ball of water. I have normal curvature and then what I do is get tight and brace out of that position. We're always looking to create tension, pull the abs down and then brace out for example. But when we lose this, it's that L5S1 that tends to kind of slip out. When we swing the kettlebell over the head, for example, the kind of innate structures of my, of my body tend to pull me over forward, and that creates a large shearing force at that SI joint. And that's one of the problems. So if, we, if we're seeing athletes overextended, that oftentimes can kind of correspond then with more SI dysfunction. The big musculature is a lot of things in the kind of pubic floor. Uh, Pubococcus gius, I think, attaches in there. I can't remember my anatomy very well. But also the piriformis is one of the big muscles that attaches right onto the piriformis. And if that thing is tight, or you're, that thing you're running short or actually rotated, don't have a lot of control, or you've been overextended and piriformis gets tight as kind of a result of that L4-5-S1 overextension, then imagine it creates a large gapping force. Can, additionally, if my hip capsules are tight and I pull my hip capsule over, that can cause another large gapping force or rotational force at that SI. So, Tonight what we're thinking about is, hey, when we have the athletes with SI pain, what is it you can do? Well, if you're not a, a licensed physio or a chiro or have skill with understanding kind of your position stuff, what you're thinking about is restoring motion. A little pelvic bridging, a little pelvic general rocking, squatting down, getting some motion. That's where that, that moniker motion is, lotion comes from. But one of the things that you can absolutely do is find that ball and get it into your piriformis region. 
That makes a big, big difference. So land that kind of in this area of the short hip rotators. And of course, you can't say it's piriformis. What you can say is, man, I've got this area right in my butt that tends to get short and tight. And you'll notice that I'm approximating that hip flexion position where I'm neutral and I can definitely find that area that's tight. That's something to roll around on. That can give room. Where we really start to see problems with that SI overextension is that the psoas gets tight, the iliacus gets tight. So, you know, if you're thinking about this critically, then anything that I'll use the little chi uh, child's ball tonight, working on that psoas. And so let's go ahead and do that tonight. Let's see if we can camp out into that psoas iliacus. And you're thinking, if I'm overextended, bam, then that also causes kind of a gapping force at that SI. And remember, we've talked about this before, that if I'm missing hip flexion because I'm res restricted at the knee ch to chest, then as I start to run into my own pelvis, boom, I'm blocked here. What ends up happening is that my psoas takes over and pulls me the rest of the way. It literally pulls my spine and I leave my hips behind and that creates an even larger nutation force which can lock me in and cause all kinds of grief. So, one of the things that I would think about, and it's a little bit counterintuitive, besides, hey, we need to open up the hip, so we're going to get, get my athletes on the couch stretch and reefing on the front, but also we go after the kind of the capsule, joint capsule position. So one of the ways to kind of fix this problem is to get some approximation to the back, restore that hip motion, fix out that problem, get that capsule to drop so that I can remove some of that flexion related force that my psoas is overcoming. Obviously, being overextended is no good, but you rarely see SI dysfunction that doesn't kind of also correlate with bad um, overextension mechanics. So, fix the overextension mechanics, undo your hips, let's get into that kind of, you know, better posterior capsule, hit the psoas, and unglue some of the ass musculature, besides, in addition to icing, and then you've got a recipe for a deal with SI pain. We'll see you guys tomorrow.